Good morning. This is David Triana with Making Connections, the virtual edition, and we have a great show today. We have a wonderful guest. Her name is Joycelyn Davis, and she is a descendant uh, of the um, slaves that were brought illegally into the area of Mobile uh, aboard the uh, the ship called uh, the Clotilda, and uh, that is a great story. Uh, very near to all of us, uh, and I hope uh, those of you that are watching uh, will uh, will stay for that interview and then hopefully visit that, the area. Uh, Making Connections is part of uh, the products that Conexion Media Group uh, produces here in the North Northwest Florida and Southern Alabama area. It is our virtual show where we bring in great, uh, wonderful interviewees to tell us about their story or the wonderful things that they're doing. In addition to that, our company produces the largest uh, Spanish and English publication in Northwest Florida. And we do also uh, great uh, multicultural events to bring people together in unity, uh, multicultural events such as the International Festival in Fort Walton Beach, the Unity Gala that we just recently held uh, here in uh, Fort Walton Beach, which uh, we raised uh, funds for the Military Spouse Chamber of Commerce. And uh, we also do some great networking events throughout the region. Uh, so our company uh, is very busy in trying to just bring people together of all races, creeds, and ethnicities. And this show is uh, one of those products. Uh, we hope you will join us uh, in Facebook and all the uh, different social media sites like Instagram and LinkedIn. I am still not in TikTok because I still Still don't believe in TikTok, but uh, you can also find us in our Conexion uh, YouTube uh, channel. Uh, so we're going to come right back here with uh, Joycelyn Davis for our interview with her, and uh, we'll be back. The Pensacola Interstate Fair starts this Thursday for 11 big days with Dollar Day. $1 admission and rides. Free shows by Credence Revived, a CCR tribute. Head games, a tribute to Forum. Joe Nichols. But tequila makes your clothes fall off. The Beach Buoys. White Tie Rock Ensemble. And Parmalee. Lots of great rides. Circa Maseo. Kids Day. Military and First Responder Days. Ladies Day. Seniors Day. And Midnight Madness. Get half price admission tickets and $5 off ride wristbands in advance only at PensacolaFair.com. Are you curious about using public transportation? Well then, Ride On invites you to give transit a try during this year's Mobility Week. During our statewide partnership with the Florida Department of Transportation, we celebrate all Floridians making smart, efficient, and safe multimodal transportation choices. Now is your chance to try something new. Many of your public transportation providers will offer free or discounted rates on October 25th. Our communities and neighborhoods are growing, and together we can reduce traffic congestion, air pollution, and even save money by lowering single rider vehicles on the road. How do we do that? There are many ways. But first, we encourage you to join us in Tri Transit Tuesday, October 25th. Learn more about the different route planning options available to you, or search for other commuting options by visiting rideontogether.org. Follow us on Facebook at Ride On Together and Twitter at RideOn underscore together. We are back. And that's why I mentioned to you, we have a great guest today. Her name is Joycelyn Davis. Uh, she uh, lives in Mobile. But let me tell you a little bit about Joycelyn because she has a very, very interesting background. And more importantly, uh, her participation uh, with the Clotilda Descendants Association and many other things is what we're going to be covering here and telling you about a great documentary that's coming up. Uh, Joycelyn Davis is a uh, direct descendant of the Cl of Clotilda survivor Charlie Lewis. In addition uh, to uh, being a descendant, uh, she is the co-founder and the former vice president of the Clotilda Descendants Association. During her tenure, she oversaw the Spirit of Our Ancestors Festival, an annual celebration of the Africatown community. Joycelyn is also a community engagement officer for Africatown's chess organization, C-H-E-S-S, -S, which stands for Clean, Healthy, Educated, 
safe and sustainable community. It is an organization that handles such issues on behalf of Africa Town. Uh, she is also on the advisory board for the newly formed Africa Town Heritage Preservation Foundation, whose mission is to help facilitate cultural and economic transformation in the community. Joycelyn was a preschool teacher at B Bishop State Community College for over 20 years and is currently employed by the Saraland City School System, where she works with children in grades uh, two through five who have autism and Down syndrome. Joycelyn graduated from Bishop State Community College, and she is a proud resident of Africatown, as we mentioned in her free time. She likes running. Better you than me. <laughs> and she also loves going to uh, football games. Um, Jocelyn, <laughs> how are you doing today? How are you doing, Jocelyn? Can you hear me? I am well. I am well. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, yes, it is I'm doing well. Ah, thank you for being day. with us on a Saturday morning. Are you a morning person like I am? Or did I wake you up? To I a... am a morning person. No, you know, I had to get up at uh, 5 a.m. every day, and Saturday is the only day I can sleep at least till 6. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're like me for many, many years, you know, wake up about 5 a.m., go to work, and all those kind of things we have to do on a daily basis, right? And then Saturdays, uh, yeah, more often than not, I, if I can sleep in, I will do so until about 6 or 7, 7 a.m., and uh, take yeah. advantage of some free time mm -hmm. from uh, my wife and son and do these recordings of the, of the interviews. So I want to thank you for <laughs> adjusting your schedule to that and uh, being here with us to talk about Africa Town. Let's talk about Africa Town because, you know, uh, uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, we interviewed you, uh, Pastor Williams, uh, Chief Jay Lewis, and also Claudia Kiwi, who also happens to be a descendant uh, like you of uh, the slaves that came aboard the um, aboard the uh, Clotilda. And uh, as I mentioned at that time, not too proud to say it because as a historian, I should know, a person that loves history, I should have known that I was 45 minutes away from a historical town called Africa Town. Uh, and many people in our area, unfortunately, still do not know about it, even though we live right here close to it. I'm sure it's, it's even the case, you know, in the vicinity of Mobile. And uh, now uh, with all the publicity that has uh, been going on for the last couple of years, uh, since they found the Clotilda, which I think happened in 2019. Is that correct? Yes. So in 2019, they found the actual uh, wreckage of the ship. But uh, just briefly, the story here. In 1860, 110 people from Dahomey, West Africa, um, were brought to Mobile as slaves. In 1860, this is over 50 years after it had become become illegal to uh, to uh, to bring slaves uh, into the United States. So these 110 people were brought in aboard a ship called the Clotilda uh, into the Mobile area, uh, based on what I understand was a bet between two very well off uh, family members there in the Mobile area. Um, and as as the history of of, of Africa Town develops, so I'm, Many of these people were also the founders of the town called Africa Town. I think about 32 people stayed in that area and uh, created Africa Town, the city of Africa Town, which up until you know World War II was a thriving, a thriving city uh, on its own. It had over 12,000 people at some point. Uh, flourished because, you know, they had all the services there that they had created, that they had built. They had built their own businesses. They had built their own uh, post office. They created the first black school in Mobile, church and everything that goes with the city, a cemetery, obviously, also, all within that proper called um, Africa Town at that point. So 12,000 people, a flourishing city, and then Something happened. What uh, tell, tell us a little bit uh, about that, um, Joy, uh, Joy Celine. What took place, you know, from that point, you know, when uh, it was a thriving city up until now when it's only, there's only 2,000 people there or so. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, growing up in Africa town, yes, it was a flourishing community. And, you know, people my age and younger, when they go off to college, you know, there, there's a goal of never coming back. 
right? Never coming back to Alabama. It's like when people mention Alabama, they say it like this, Alabama, you know, what's in Alabama? So a lot of people move away. They want to see the big city. They want to see Atlanta. They want to see Chicago. They want to see New York. And once they get a taste of the big city, quote unquote, they feel like, that, you know, coming back to Alabama, they, they look like they're a failure if they come back. But, you know, I'm still here and I'm, I'm glad that I stay in this community because of the rich history. Mm -hmm. I feel like places in um, New York and Chicago and Atlanta, they don't need a Joycelyn. I feel like my community needs someone like myself and others that embrace that story. And, you know, that story is, um, has so many layers to it. It, um, it wasn't just a drunken bed, okay? So, you know, how the story goes, but it was actually Timothy Mayer and his business partners because there were 100 plus, in the, 100 plus enslaved Africans that were brought over to Mobile. So Timothy Mayer only received 32, Foster received eight, but others were shipped other places, right? Right. So it was a business and move in many ways. It was a too, business obviously. move. It was a business move. And also, you know, a, a thing that we don't talk about is what was going on in the kingdom of, of Dahomey, which is present day Benin today. Present day Benin there is were, Dahomey. Okay. Right. So there was an article that was um, um, put out in the Mobile Register in 1858 that there was a brisk sale of, of slaves. And there was a war between tribes and villages were raided, right? So you have this movie that's out that everybody's um, is hype of, uh, called Woman King. But these women in, in that movie, they, they raided the villages, right? So these people were, these villages were raided. When Foster arrived to the kingdom of the home and these people are already in barracoons where he can make his selection. Yeah, I see. But, but when he met the king, there was an exchange. He just didn't go over there. You know, white men just didn't go over there and capture enslaved Africans. These people were already in barracoons waiting to be selected. And he went over with $9,000 in gold. Right? There was an exchange. Got it. So, so many people were, were involved in this. But, you know, how I embraced the story because I didn't as a kid because I realized that these people went through all of this starting. Actually, I'm going to say it started from 1855 when the Clotilda was actually built. Mm -hmm. But it was built to bring goods, palm oil and lumber and cotton. It wasn't a slave ship in the beginning. Correct. But Foster outfitted it for a, for a slave ship. So, you know, of course, Timothy Mayer hi hired Foster because he was known as the best sea captain. So, you know, Timothy Mayer, you know, when I was a kid, I thought Timothy Mayer went to um, the kingdom of the home, but it was Foster and his crew. Because as a little girl, I was like, well, how did one man go over to um, Africa? But, you know, you have to realize that he hired a crew. Exactly. And he hired a crew and... Of course, he had to bring over the gold and then um, food. There was food on the ship because it was like a two-month yeah. Takes many, journey. many, many days. Yes, exactly. Months. Many, many, many days. But how I look at it, David, is um, what they did when they got here, right? The ages ranged from 2 to 25. So these were young people. These were babies. And I still consider a 25-year-old a baby. So... You know, these were preschoolers, elementary, middle, high school, college students that came over on the Clotilda. But when they arrived here, they did not have a slavery mentality. Most of the people here were already born into it and they were all they already had that mindset. But these these individuals did not. The first 32 right? in a sense. Right. So you know, it, it's growing up as a child, I had to realize like, wow, they survived their journey. And when they got here, they built a school, they wanted education. So they, they, they said, okay, we, we want education. So a school was built for them. Um, 
they they practice their own religion right because some of them were um i think it's called voodoo and some were muslims but you know they they would dance on sunday and this um guy named free george would say you know why don't you guys uh, go to church and they was like well what is church you know because they had their own religion and they started their own church they found religion and they started their own church and after being a slave for five years, they actually thought that they could go back home. They worked in these mills and they worked in these different places and they saved money and they asked, could they go back home? And it was, that was just, just not possible. Not right. they, they were not, yeah, they were not going, but they were brave enough to, to think and, you know, to ask, could they, could they go back home? But once, when they were denied that we're going to make this our own Africa town, wow. right? We're going to, we're going to call this Africa town. So today, Africa Town doesn't resemble Africa, right? So I'm hopeful with the story because it is the last known documented slave ship in U.S. history, and that right. resonates in my mind. The last known there there is no other known ship in U.S. history, and Alabama has that. Uh, Mobile holds on to the fact that we are um, we're the originators of Mardi Gras. So right. when people talk about Mobile, I want them not to only talk about Mardi Gras, but this Mobile is the home of the last known documented slave ship, the Clotilda. Sure. So um, I'm hopeful for tourism and dollars to come into in the community where it can, you know, go back to what it was. I remember the grocery stores and the barber shops and you know the post office and things like that. And those things, once people leave out of community, all those things go away with the people who leave. Yes, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. So we're hopeful. We're, we're hopeful. And this story is, you know, you know, after the 60 Minutes piece, after the National <laughs> Geographic, and it's just because as a little girl, I would have never thought that it would get this far. But when you grow up in the 80s and the, the uh -huh. 90s, there was no Google, there was no Internet, there was no Facebook, there was no Instagram. And you talk about TikTok <laughs> and all that, all those things that wasn't there. So you reaching, you're reaching um, a larger, a larger audience, audience. Yes. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, one. Uh, I'm amazed that to, to to hear that there was babies, technically babies. You know, actual toddlers uh, as part of the as part of the uh, of the people that were brought in here. Uh, it is my understanding that only one person died on the during the 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 trip from Africa to here. I think I read somewhere in that story. I'm amazed that ba a baby, a two year old, would survive an 80 day or 70 day trip uh, in a cramped environment such as. Uh, such mm -hmm. as the ships. So I think, you know, uh, some, some of the um, the bad things about the story sometimes is that people concentrate on on, on, the, on the whys, you know, the bet versus no, no, no. I mean, this was really a business enterprise that had to participate in all of this, the money that had to feed the, the crew that was going over there, getting an experienced captain that I'm sure wasn't cheap for the for the time so there was a whole business enterprise behind this uh taking advantage of a situation that's going on over there in, in now present day been in the homie at that time uh so uh, yeah a whole enterprise behind it and that's that's uh also uh something that we cannot let go you know to understand that there was a, a big thing going on behind it but uh, also very important to not forget that there was people within that they were brought here illegally and uh, obviously not on a voluntary basis and i think the part uh, that is hugely and most important too is also that that um, there's people involved in this in this situation obviously that that persevered and then then when they came here they they through their resiliency and their abilities uh, and experience you know uh, back home they created a town called Africa Town. So um, it's a great story. It's a wonderful story. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what has taken place here in the last year, maybe, on, uh, on on those things? I know you've seen an increased number of tourism, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was an, an, an increased um, number of tourism. And actually, we 
um, Joe Womack, who is the executive director of Chess, we um, we did a tour with 90 people from the University of Virginia this summer. And Mobile, he, I don't know about Pensacola, he, but Mobile, he did, it's hot. But we, we did a nice tour with some, and some students and professors from the University of Virginia. And I, you know, I see people driving through Africa town because some people say it's nothing to see, but the history is so rich. Once, some, once someone starts telling you the story, you kind of forget about, you know, what you don't see. It's uh -huh. like you kind of That's feel, right. you, you feel it. And it's even if you go to the site, if you, you know, you can go so far to the site because it's heavily guarded. But when Ben Rains take you to the site and start telling the story, you kind of, you feel, you feel it. And then they talk about the crickets, like these, um, these young people never heard crickets before and they would hear these crickets and they didn't uh -huh. understand like what was that noise and you know they had never you know they were in a foreign land so you can create an experience because you know I'm trying to be an experience giver you can create that and that's what we're learning now through training is like you can make this story with however however you want to do it right yes but we have a um we have a uh, some friends um eric finley and judge finley callers finley um it's called adore finley african-american tours and they give a very 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 extensive tour and then also joe womack joe womack does a great tour and he he does it um a grassroots tour in his pickup truck <laughs> uh. he takes you around <laughs> africa and he and the, the families have their own um, van and Joe can tell it through, you know, as a, as a boy growing up in Africa town. So, you know, we're hopeful. And also we have the heritage house that's being built and it's called the Clotilda Excubition. And sometimes I have a hard time saying excubition, <laughs> but that is, that is done by our political champion, Commissioner Masiri Luggood right and the structure is up you know we're just you know they're getting things together but it's so awesome to see you know I was excited growing up as a child seeing our hope center where uh -huh. you know kids can come and play basketball and you can hold meetings and all those things and it's you know I love the fact that we have that center but now we have a, a, a Clotilde exhibition with people that's something else in the community so slowly we're getting different structures I, I i feel like we're going to get more and more structures in africa town you know with you know people recognizing this story this, you know, heri now it's time to this heritage house that you're describing is where you know people are going to get that experience of uh, lear learning about the history itself but also obviously connecting it to the present and and, and, and what went on since uh, obviously all the different situations that are have, uh, the town has experienced, you know, from the growth around it uh, by industry that you know kind of uh, kind of took away some of the some of the things that existed. So all of those issues obviously are are part of the story, and uh, so those are things that are still ongoing discussions and and solutions hopefully found soon to allow it to to go back to a flourishing community and you all are doing some great things with the descendants association also obviously to keep the history alive correct mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anything yes, coming up right from the now, uh, association yeah you know one thing that we're doing now we um we're working on an oral or history project where we're going to train young people to interview their grandparents and aunts and uncles where they can become storytellers so they can learn. So that's one thing that, um, that we're working on. Then also, um, this will be my fifth year in 2023, um, organizing the Spirit of Our Ancestors Festival. So oh. my idea is always like, how do I get the young people to participate? To yes, that's very important. To participate. It's, it's so important. And, you know, I remember Me being too. younger and people always say, you know, the young people, the young people, I was like, why is everybody so focused on us? But it's, it, they, they don't realize that the future is theirs. That's right. Now you're so in their place. We, now you're in their, in their place. Yeah, right. <laughs> but no, bottom line, right. you know, if, we don't pass, the, if we don't pass our, those traditions and or that knowledge, uh, uh, 
if you don't allow them for to if you don't allow the youth to participate then you know it, it may it may go away because you don't have anybody following you to continue the to continue the story to continue the tradition the events the activities that uh that highlight the history yes. of it. so very important exactly. get the kids and, in there know, <laughs> it's important because you know when i was growing up it was just it wasn't you know of course again i'm repeating myself like internet and things like that you know at me i'm just always trying to find a way to create i'm looking at the younger me to say how would i um present this to, to joycelyn uh -huh. as a younger self to get her really interested because she wasn't as a teenager right so we have a play called an ocean in my bones and it was really mm -hmm. it was received well last year we're going to refine it again for 2023 and i wanted to grow i wanted to travel to kill a mockingbird is very popular in monrova alabama it's one of my favorite stories and people flock to a tiny town, Monroeville. It is not very many people in Monroeville. They flock to Monroeville to see To Kill a Mockingbird. That's right. Every year. <laughs> it's the same story. It's the that's same right. story. So that's what I want. I want people to flock every year to come and see an ocean in my bones. Right? And then, you know, it could go to Broadway. And also with all the, the the story of the Clotilda, and I'm a direct descendant of Charlie Lewis and Maggie Lewis, because sometimes we forget about the women that were on the ship. Right. Because he married one of his shipmates. Right. And in 2017, um, the drummer from the Roots, Quest Love, traced his, um, his roots back to Africa Town, and we're related. So he is one of the executive producers on the film Descendant, and we'll get into that. Wow. But, you know, seeing somebody like the kids see something like, like, oh, man, like he's a descendant. Oh, man, it's cool to be a descendant. Yes, you know? right. That, that, that's a so, good thing, yeah. too, obviously. Yeah, that. right, right, right. And, and for nice. someone like him to embrace his culture, it's going to want other kids to, you know, to, to do the same. Exactly. Exactly. Completely agree. Completely agree. Got to get the youth in there. That is a hugely important thing for any entity, church, organization. Uh, in this case, this historical town and the Sands Association, uh, so that, you know, they can continue it once we are not here. You know, that is the thing about that. And take advantage right. of all this great technology that they are very versed on, these young people, you know what I mean? Uh, have them use that technology to spread the word, spread the word, yeah. you know, wide throughout the world about Africa Town. Uh, we're going to come back then, uh, um, Joycelyn, with... Uh, you know, a conversation about that wonderful documentary you sent us a link to that is coming up uh, via Netflix. Um, so we're going to take a quick short break and then come back and you're going to tell us all about that great documentary that you were a part of uh, this, you know, again, part of the way that you are spreading the word and that individual that you mentioned uh, spreading the word about the history of Africa Town. So stay with us. We're going to come right back with a little bit more with Joyce Lynn Davis and the story of Africa Town. Uh, in Mobile, Alabama area. Do you want to advertise to thousands of Hispanics and non-Hispanics in North, Northwest Florida and Southern Alabama? ¿Quieres promover tu empresa y producto a miles de hispanos y no hispanos? Connection is your most cost-efficient way to do so. Conexión es tu solución. We are the largest English and Spanish publication in our region. Our primary mission is to inform, guide, and educate our readers via interesting content. Somos la publicación mensual en español y en inglés de la más grande distribución en toda la región. Además de las 5,000 copias en papel, tenemos activas las redes sociales, incluyendo Facebook, on Twitter, e Instagram, y también por Internet. Conexión is your bridge to connect you to the growing Hispanic market in the region. Call us. Llámanos. We are back with our um, guest, Joycelyn Davis, uh, who is um, a descendant of the uh, slaves that were brought in aboard the um, 
Clotilda back in 1860 into the Mobile area. And we've been talking about Africatown itself, the history of Africatown and some of the things that are going on right now in uh, helping the uh, city uh, come back to its uh, glory days in a sense and, uh, and grow the tourism and all those things and spread the word on tourism or correction on the story uh, through the local residents, the present people like uh, the active people like Joyce Lynn Davis. And uh, we talked also obviously about the importance of getting youth to participate and uh, getting them involved in this wonderful history of Africatown. Uh, we're going to talk right now also about a, a wonderful documentary that uh, Joyce Ling was part of. It's called Descendants, and the documentary is going to be premiering on 21 October via Netflix. So you cannot miss it. We're going to talk ab about it. Uh, Joyce Ling, I think... Uh, before we start talking about it, let's show the video that you sent us, that little, uh, that clip uh, of the uh, of the um, documentary. So people get a little taste of this professionally well-made documentary you were part of, and then you can tell us all about it and your experience with it. Sounds good? Yes. All right. Let's see how technology works here. Well, I think, can you see it? I can see From it. From birth, my daddy, he always wanted us to be able to talk to our people. Because you have this type of history, your ancestors are going to always talk to you. The way my mother told me, Timothy Mayer, a local businessman, made a bet that after slavery was abolished, that he could still bring Africans into the country. He went and brought them back here and burned the ship to conceal the crime. It's slowly been erased, and as far as I can remember, it's never been in history books. The Mayor family lied to lead people to the wrong area so they wouldn't find the ship. How should I say this? I don't want the momentum of the story to just be focused on the ship. It's not all about that ship. The village that these Africans built, they called African Town. They created this thriving place, and they've been holding it down and fighting ever since. But by 2019, African Town is completely surrounded every direction by some form of heavy industry. What person want to wake up knowing that they sitting on historic land, but they got to smell the chemicals from a factory? A lot of influential people involved in all this. I think the Book of Secrets is going to be open. I don't want our history to be taken the same way our people were taken. But everybody wants to know something about their ancestors. The history is like a puzzle that fits together. I don't want to be a part of it. I would like for us to be it. As a child, I thought the story was sad. Now, I don't get sad no more. Because we still here. My only fear is for my people's story not to be told. Wow, lady. <laughs> Great trailer. I love it. And I love the comment you made. Tell us what it is. <laughs> let me talk, let me shut this down over here. Let's uh, still explain. Tell me a little bit about how it went. You were part, you were a direct participant in this. Uh, tell us about the documentary, your experience doing it. Well, my experience doing it, I met, and I hopefully we won't, we're not getting too far ahead, but I met Margaret Brown through Dr. Kern Jackson. She actually filmed um, the festival. And before the festival, Dr. Jackson was like, hey, I want you to meet Margaret. Is it okay? She comes in and filmed the festival. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's fine. You know, because uh, no one asked could they film it, and I knew it needed to be documented. Right. And I also saw her filming one of our community meetings and I was like who's this girl she looks like she's from New York you know she just had that 
New York look. <laughs> and um, I met her, you know, shortly after the festival and she told me what she was doing. And, you know, come to find out that she is a native of Mobile. Is that right? Oh, yes, wow. she is a native of Mobile. And, you know, how I look at Margaret and filming this story. And I was like, Margaret was a beast in this in this filming. Like, she was with us every step. We were in the heat. We were, you know, she followed me. <laughs> and I don't, want, I don't want to get too much into the film, but she I understand that. She follows me everywhere. She follows <laughs> us everywhere, not just me. She follows us everywhere. And there has always been this thing of people asking, well, she is, she's a white woman telling a story, but she's not telling us what to say. Right. Right. It's just, we're just it's just through through the through the lens. We're we're telling the story. She's not telling us what to say. So we film, and it's, it's so weird. We filmed for four years. Is that we, right? Yeah, that's why I was why I was looking at the numbers that you gave me here. That uh, the mm -hmm. film was went from 2018 to 2021, four years. We filmed for four years. We graduated high school. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, just raw grassroots. You know, then you know she's covering all of the facets that are going on in Africa Town. You know, so it's just been amazing. And finally, the world is going to know the story of Africa Town. Now, for me, I remember this story being taught in, um, we have Alabama history. We have Alabama uh -huh. history in the fourth and ninth grade. In school, right? Okay. Right, in school. But now it's going globally. And this film has been picked up by Netflix. Right, and how? Let, let me go back a little bit to what you just said. It, is the history of the Clotilda part of Alabama history in public? It schools? is. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a. All right. You know, I, I have to take it for the educators. It's a small section, but it's there. Got it. It's okay. there. You know, it's a small section, but it is there. Okay. Yeah. So yes. And now Netflix, it's going global, as you said. Nef ne you could not tell me Netflix. And David, I don't know if you know that um, the Obamas with their production company, Higher Ground, is a part of this. You know, we met the Obamas in August. Is that correct? Is that right? Did, uh, did you go somewhere to meet them or did they come to you? So um, there was the Martha's Vineyard African American Film Festival. Uh -huh. And Descendants was screened there. And... The Obamas have, um, they have a residence in Martha's Vineyard. Right. And we did not know that we were going to meet them. <laughs> and then, uh, we have a surprise guest. And we were um, at this little place for dinner and walk, it, who walks in but Michelle and Barack Obama. Is that right? That had to be a great experience huh? and, uh, to see that support yeah. too. It's very important now. Mm -hmm. And um, also Amir Thompson, who's the drummer for the Jimmy Fallon show and also the drummer for The Roots, uh, wow. Tracy's Roots Back to Africa Town. And he's also a part of the film. So we, we you know, I ate um, lunch with the president. Well, I don't, I don't <laughs> even like to say former. I would say I ate with the president and his wife and Questlove and, and others. So it's finally getting the attention that it needs. You know, right. we, um, it's been in several film festivals. Sundance got canceled due to COVID, right? We, that was back in January. That was the first screening. And then it went to Austin, Texas. It went to Birmingham, Martha's Vineyard. And we just left New York last weekend. That's right. That's why I spoke to you uh, as you were in New York when you sent that link. And uh, <laughs> uh, I see also that it, it has won some awards, including the Best Documentary Film Award at the Sidewalk Film Festival. Where is that one at? That was in Birmingham. Oh, that was in Birmingham. Okay. So, yes, mm -hmm. it's, been, uh, it's been out there. And you know what? I think they're one of the best things that is going to come out of well, the, all the publicity. But this film especially, because a film is a, a more powerful thing than a report or a 
you know, even if it's 60 minutes, obviously that's highly watched. It was a wonderful, it was a wonderful report. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and that's how I first saw it. But a film or a documentary is something totally different because it, it just hits you in the heart. Your statement, just that one statement you made, <laughs> almost made me cry. Believe oh, me. Okay. I'm not okay. joking because okay. it's powerful to say what you say mm -hmm. because sometimes we forget. Okay. That it's not mm -hmm. about the ship. It's not about the bet either. Mm -hmm. It's about people and, right. and kids that were brought in and all that stuff that's mm -hmm. involved with it and resiliency mm -hmm. and hope and all those kind of things, you know, that uh, that uh, proceed, uh, that that took place after, obviously. So yeah, uh, it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a great thing. And uh, so Margaret Brown is the uh, director. Uh, took about four years to make it, which uh, obviously that means it's being done well and right. And it's got a you know they got to put yes, all these exactly. great things together into sending one powerful message, mm -hmm. obviously, right? And then getting Netflix mm -hmm. involved, obviously, is is huge. Uh, now the documentary itself is focused on descendants and there are some featured descendants within it you are one of them obviously i we saw you make that statement in the trailer um are the other individuals that are part of it uh current uh, residents of uh africatown or are they spread out throughout the united states or the world i'm sure the ones that are some, featured. some yeah just some just spread out with, um within the mobile area um emmett who is um the first guy you hear he lives in Africa Town. He is a direct descendant of Kudjo Lewis. Oh. Uh-huh. He's a direct descendant of Kudjo Lewis. And um, um Vita, Vita and her mother, Miss Henson, they live in the Mobile area. So and you have Joe Walmack. His mother lives in Africa Town. His mother is 90 plus, and she lives in Africa Town. And he has been our environmental um protector, guru, all of the above. And Ramsey, um, he's a Native American, and he is one of um, our environmental um, political champions as well, and he's in the film. And you'll see Ben Rains, who's actually from Fairhope, that's uh -huh. in the film, who um, we like to say he rediscovered the ship because it's always been there, so he rediscovered the Clotilda. Right, right, exactly. And uh, obviously, Dr. James Delgado, uh, world-renowned archaeologist, uh, was also part of, uh, you know, the actual uh, recovery. Well, not recovery in a sense, but the identification piece, which is very important. I saw a great mm -hmm. interview of Dr. James, or it's Jim Delgado, James Jim Delgado, I think he goes by, uh, who um, was talking about the, the archaeological part and the important part of you know, identifying the ship itself among the many ships that were in that um, ship mm -hmm. cemetery, as they call it, in that in that part of the lake Hi. or the part of the river. Um, mm -hmm. So, when the when the actual obviously the film will be for public consumption through Netflix, everybody will get to see it at their homes on the twenty first of October. Mm -hmm. uh, are they going to present it at a certain time on the twenty first of October? Do you know that, or do you know what time is going to premiere? Are you guys going to have like a special presentation of the premiere in Africa Town? Anything like that going on? So I don't know the time yet for um, Netflix on October 21st, but there will be a screening here in Mobile at the Sanger Theater. Ah, okay. And uh, so obviously, as soon as you find out what time Netflix gives you permission to do it, then you all will have a screening of it. Uh, in, mm -hmm. for you know for uh, people to come and uh, watch it together yes yes at the same and I, I will make sure you get the details and then it will air on Netflix on the 21st we'll have a screening at the singer on the 22nd then also we have like they call it like an art house it's called a crescent theater mm -hmm. the crescent theater will screen it from the 23rd to the 27th and that's a sunday through thursday and the crescent only holds about the capacity is about 90 people i understand so it's, so gonna, it's gonna be filled it's gonna, i know it's gonna be packed it's gonna uh, be uh, but as filled. soon as you get those dates that'd be wonderful if you can send it to us uh you know to text it or email it we'd love to help get the word out for people to have a chance to see it uh for those that are uh, screenings that are going to be open to the public uh, you know, let get the word out. It's, I think it's so important uh, for people to support 
watch the film because uh, again it'll be even more powerful if you're watching it among a group of people that are interested in in the story yeah. and or mm-hmm. those that have not heard the story I, i'm telling you there's going to be some some not too many dry <laughs> eyes in that in that in that theater i can assure okay. you of that especially for you guys i'm sure you know the people that are directly related to it but uh, those of us too that that like the history of things and also um you know um, to support such projects uh, i'm sure you know many people there will will be enlightened by what they see uh it's not about the ship it's not about the bet <laughs> right <laughs> right 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 sure. right that is so important. Anything else that you would like to tell us about uh, about your experience with the uh, documentary and or some closing remarks about um, about it, inviting people or things like that? You know, it's just been a, God, just like kind of pinch myself kind of thing. I've been traveling with this film. I just didn't think that, you know, it would happen like this. I Going to different film festivals, I like to see um, how the audience reacts, you know, in each city that we go in is always so different, uh-huh. you know, so, you know, I'm just taking a poll of, you know, how people react, and I just hope that this story becomes a motion picture. I, I have TV. no doubt it will. <laughs> <laughs> I remember a year and a half ago we were talking about this. And I know obviously the documentary was already in play. But uh, the bottom line is I personally cannot fathom uh-huh. somebody, somebody out there mm-hmm. seeing this as a feature film and seeing the great story yeah. behind it. Uh, it. it I just can't. And I know you you can't either. There's going to be a film about this. There's going to be right, a feature right. film. There's no question about yeah. it. Uh, uh-huh. Let us let us know when you find uh-huh. out who's doing it. Okay? Because <laughs> it's going to happen, I'm yes, sure. Yes, and it has to be the right person. It has Bottom to be line. the right person. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. exactly. It has to be. So that's it has my to hope. Be mm-hmm. Based on a true story, the true story. <laughs> right, 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 right. It has to be. Anything else, uh, Joycelyn, to close it out? Uh, any final words on your beautiful Africa town? No, I just um, want to thank you for, you know, allowing me to come onto your show. And, you know, we met a few years ago and we have been in touch ever since. And, you know, I'm so grateful and thankful to, to know you. So, you know, and you can help spread the word in Pensacola. Right, so all throughout yeah. the region, that's okay. that's our goal, right? All here. throughout the region, let people know right yes. there, very close to you. It's a historical town called Africa Town. You need to go see it and check out the film, uh, the documentary on the 21st of October through Netflix. Uh, as soon as we find out when Netflix is going to show it, what time or whatever, we get the word out through social media. And yes, please let us know about the specific uh. Um, screenings you're going to have over there in uh, the Mobile area and the other places. Down. And uh, congratulations. Congratulations on being a part of this. I know you've been working on the, not not specifically on the documentary, just on behalf of your of your city, of your town, Africa town. You've been relentless in working with it, uh, with people there. This, the uh, Descendants Association is doing a great job. And you, yourself, uh, keeping the youth, keeping the <laughs> youth interested in it. Uh, yes. Keep working. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Thank it's you. hugely important. And, uh, it is. It is. And make sure others join you in that effort to ensure the youth um, are aware of this and continue passing the word, just like you heard it from your uh, from your ancestors. It was the mm-hmm. voice uh, through the through their stories. Right? They didn't have yes. internet. They had to. No, voice they it did <laughs> to their kids, right. and their and the kids voiced it to the other. And when they became parents, they voiced it to their kids. Now. It can still be passed that way, obviously, but now it's it's a much more uh, wide way of uh, getting the word out to people. Okay, so it's just going to continue to grow. The film will be here within five years. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joycelyn. I, I, I receive it. You're welcome. Thank you, Joycelyn, for joining us. I uh, appreciate you, and uh, may God continue to bless you. Thank you for Thank taking you care of kids well. with autism. I have a child with autism, so you know you have All a. Right. A warm yeah, yeah. place in my heart for doing that. God bless you. All right. Thank you. We'll be back.
there are always some great things going on in our region. So here's our section, ¿Qué pasa en nuestra región? Well, as the saying goes, all good things must, must come to an end. And uh, we have reached the end of our show, Making Connections, the virtual edition. Uh, we want to thank uh, Joyce Lynn Davis of the uh, Clotilda Descendants Association in Mobile for coming on uh, and telling us all about uh, the latest and greatest on what's going on in Africa Town, and also uh, on that uh, documentary that uh, will be coming up on the 21st of October through Netflix. Uh, it is a great story. Uh, a historical a town, historical uh, occurrence uh, as part of the United States history. And again, Africa Town is uh, now a, considered a neighborhood or a section of the Mobile, uh, the city of Mobile. Uh, so it's not too far away from those of us that live here in the Northwest Florida, North Florida area. And uh, we uh, invite everyone to learn more about that, uh, more about the town, more about the history. Uh, check out that documentary and uh, go visit uh, Africa Town when uh, uh, when you have a chance. Uh, I know you will get that uh, great feeling of being in a historical location, and um, and you will enjoy it. So make sure that you do that. Um, we want to thank you uh, for following us on uh, Facebook. Uh, Conexión Media Group is active in Facebook with many different pages, including our Hispanics and Friends linked networking page and all about our events uh, within uh, Facebook, also in Instagram and uh, LinkedIn. And more importantly, follow us uh, through our YouTube channel for Conexión, in which you will see all our past interview shows, uh, Making Connections interview shows. You will see our reports of Conexión on the streets and many other things that uh, Conexión Media Group produces, such as our seminars and informational uh, workshops and all those kind of things that we have been uh, producing for the last uh, many years. This year will be our eighth year in existence uh, since Conexión Media Group was created and uh, our first product being the Conexión English and Spanish publication, which you can check it out on in our website, conexionflorida.com. Uh, that is the website for the Conexión publication, which is also distributed throughout the region in over 100 places, uh, all the way from Tallahassee to Mobile and south of Mobile, Alabama. Uh, again, thank you very much for uh, being with us today. And we'll catch you next time on Making Connections, the virtual edition. Que Dios les bendiga. May God bless you. And I continue to uh, give you success in all your endeavors. Hasta la próxima.